welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I have my friends here with me and we will be answering a couple questions <laughs> about the college process. I'm really excited to do this video because I feel like my friends are very um, knowledgeable about the college process even though we're all a mess. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so the first question is, Say, if you're comfortable, say where you're going to school and what you plan on studying, starting with Scarlett. Um, I am planning on study film and um, television production, and I'll be going to NYU Tisch School of the Arts. Yay! Um, I'm going to uh, Washington University in St. Louis, and I'll be studying political science. Okay, I'm going to Emory University, and I'm studying neuroscience and behavioral biology. Um, I'm going to Williams College. I don't really know what I'm studying, but definitely humanities, and I love classics, so we'll see. Um, I'm going to a school in <laughs> America, um, and I'm going in as undecided. So, by the way, my friends here, so it's Mary, Trudy, Marissa, Julie, and Scarlett. Okay. So, the second question. Talk about how you created your college list, what were your priorities in choosing what schools you wanted to apply to? Um, well, first I looked at location and also size. So I personally wanted a small school and I also wanted to stay on the East Coast. Um, and that's how I really made my list. And also financial aid is really important. We get help with financial aid. Um, my top priority was that the school had a, an established neuroscience program because that's my area of interest and also I wanted to be in the city so that there were a lot of research opportunities and just things to do like going out to restaurants, concerts, etc. I was really looking to big cities because that's where the film industry is most prosperous. Um, so basically in LA and in New York. Those are the two locations I'm looking at. And then my um, top priority for applying to co like selecting colleges was the um, film school ranking. Because um, the better the school is, the more resources it has. Um, How is Tish's film school? Tish is great. Mm. Go to Tish. Um, <laughs> top one. Yikes. Um, for me personally, it had to be co ed. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. All girls. All girls school for four years. Yeah. Yeah. Third question. Um, when did you guys start writing your personal statement and supplemental essays? <laughs> so I basically made my college list. I want to say when did we get on break? December eighteenth. Sometime there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. I made my college list like the day we went on winter break. I like. Cause I up until that point I had maybe like four schools that I wanted to apply to, and so I basically made the rest of my list during winter break, and I wrote all the supplements during winter break. I was literally in the library for ten days straight. I just like I would go to the library like get bubble tea, and then I would like sit there and write my essays for the entire day, um, and that was how I done, got it done. And I also wrote my personal statement. Um, fall semester so like of senior year so I didn't start over the summer because my SAT score wasn't too hot so I studied all summer um, to improve my SAT which I did so that was good. Yeah I I did my common app and um, well I drafted one version of my personal statement over the summer and then I got to school and um, went to the writing center about teachers basically and um, the teacher was kind of like, this is good, but why don't you do it in this completely different way? So then I rewrote it, um, and yeah, just a lot of editing and information. Um, and personal, or supplements, I just kind of worked on steadily over the um, course of the first semester, basically. Okay, so the fourth question is, do you guys have any advice about time management and dealing with school and clubs and sports all at the same time while trying to complete your college application? <laughs> I think you just need to think about what you want to prioritize. And you might have a busy schedule, but sometimes you have to miss things. That's kind of just what life is. You sometimes have to miss things that might be important, but something else might be a little bit more important. I feel like the one thing that, well, okay, so like, as 
I've said before, I procrastinated like a lot. Um, and I think the one downside to that for me was like programs or like scholarships that um, mm. you apply for like before you actually send in your application or like that were way before January 1st. Um, those I think I missed out on. But then it turned out to be okay because like I emailed my college and I was like, please give me more money and they did. <laughs> so like sometimes it works out, but I would definitely recommend to check out programs and scholarships and things like mm. that that you're interested in um, way early on so that you're ready for them before the deadline. Cause some of them have deadlines in like November um, and October. So just be, sh be sure that um, you're aware of those. And if you want to apply like ED, make sure that um, you definitely have your materials ready. So the fifth question, um, so there's a long waiting period in between when you submit your application in around January mm -hmm. and in March when you actually find out the decision. So what was that um, time? How did you feel during that time where there's a lot of waiting mm -hmm. and just like all of that stuff? Yeah. For me, like as soon as I submitted everything, um and was finally done like there was nothing more to do except wait that was like heaven <laughs> i don't know the first semester of school when i was still applying for colleges was just the worst because you always have to think of you're like putting your whole life out for these schools to just look at and consider and see whether they like you or not enough to admit you um and it's so stressful because it seems like there's really nothing you can do and you just don't you have no idea what's going to happen so i felt very blissful not knowing um and not also not having to do anything but then once um like the dates like i think like the second week of march or so mm -hmm. rolled around and all a lot of schools are like yes we will tell you in march sometime between this yeah. date and that date and you're like okay so when, what time am I randomly going to get an email from some school that says your um, portal has been updated? So that started to get really stressful. The last question is talk about your essays if you're comfortable and talk about how you approach them and any advice that you have about personal statements and the supplements for the schools that you're applying to, like from the ones that you're most passionate about getting into to your safety schools. Um, so for my personal statement, I wrote about it with my um, ooh, sorry relationship with my mom, um, which is really personal to me. Um, but also, I feel like with personal statements, um, you it's okay to be like it's okay to be risky with it um, and like take risks because I feel like there are so many other kids out there um, who also have to write this, and so um, writing things that are personal and like detailed and can make you stand out is really important because they're gonna be reading so many personal statements. Um, and I felt like my personal statement really um, kind of shaped who I was as a person and what I wanted to do um, with my life in the future and the kind of community that I wanted to be in. Um, and for my schools, so like how I wrote my supplements was like, I basically went online and I was like, blank school supplement and then I would look up these guides about how to write the supplement um and it kind of helps give me sort of like a head start on writing them so it's I think it's kind of helpful if you do that um and a lot of them like it would start it would start off with like a mini story and then I would like go into the importance of that um so I felt more natural than like kind of the essay format when you're where you're like listing out the sort of main idea because like that just feels kind of like more like an essay and less personal so it feels like more like a conversation i'll just say something about supplements which is i think it's a good idea to find um something that you can kind of either reuse for multiple schools or kind of change for multiple schools so well my personal statement um was sort of related to my identity and stuff and my adoption because that's something that's really personal to me and I don't really share about a lot so um, I thought that was a topic that I could really dive deep into and that would be pretty original and obviously like very personal um, and then in terms of supplements I think that I put an equal amount of effort into my supplements actually um, for all of my schools because even if it's your safety school or your reach school like 
there's always a slight chance that you might not get into any school. So I think that don't really look at the acceptance rate or whatever statistics and stuff. Just put your full effort um, into your writing. I wrote my personal statement on an event that happened in my freshman year that was hurtful to me, and I grew from it. Um, I I had this idea right away because before the college application, I've always considered myself as a very reflective person, and I felt like that period of time really encouraged me to be the person who I am today. Also, these people. I think one school, I think it's Chapel Hill, that I got rejected because they had two supplements, and one of them is. I couldn't remember, but what I wrote was very, very like up in the air. It was not. Talk- it was talking about my feelings and my emotions, and without like specific content, or without specific context, or um, like things that I've done, but just my emotions. And I think that's not helpful in your college application because they review all kinds of thousands of applications every year and they need to know who you are by looking at things that you did. That's, that's just how I feel. Um, so that was my early action. So as I got rejected, I started to write my supplements based on more the, what I did and then what I grew from what I did. So put your emotions within context. Context will help you and help the reviewer of your application um, understand you a lot better. So this pretty much concludes the video with the last question, but do you guys have any more advice to give the viewers? I hate to say this, but um, as a lot of schools are encouraging that SAT and TOEFL for international students do not matter, they do. A lot of schools with lower acceptance rate, they matter a lot. And I think I got rejected by some schools because of my SAT score. I, so I think it's really important for you to um, like make connections with, uh, for instance, your regional admissions officer. Because for me, I think some of the schools that I got accepted into was because I reached out to my um, admissions um, officer and I like developed a relationship with them. Um, and so that way, because like they are your biggest advocate when they're in that room with all the other admissions officers, they are your advocate for your region because they're the ones having the first sort of um, like look at your application. Um, and so you really want to establish a relationship with them um, and let them know that you truly want to go to their school. And so like for me, I think that was actually how I got into some of the um, more of my reach schools. You want to make sure that the schools like actually care about it um, because some schools don't because they get like so many applications but for some of them um, that's how they narrow it down and it could be the difference between you getting accepted um, versus like waitlisted or denied. Don't apply to any schools that you just don't want to go to. I think um, Oh, you guys were saying that you kind of finalized your list in December. I finalized my list much earlier, and by the time December rolled around, there were some schools that I was like, I don't even know why I applied here. I, d- I would not go here even if I got it, and so don't waste your time. Get rid of schools if you decide you don't want to go there. Add schools if you're like, okay, actually, this is one of my top schools. I guess it's easier said than done, but kind of just don't let the whole college process take away from like having fun in high school because it's your last year and you just want to enjoy those moments with your friends um and all those and have like nice memories to look back to in the future and just think about your bright future and what you have ahead of you and also like buying merch from your school you know <laughs> like school spirit um <laughs> Yeah. All right. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe down below if you want more content about the college process and all those good things. But yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you next video. Bye.